The night shift had been especially exhausting. I always dedicated myself body and soul to my work as a nurse, but lately, it felt like life was draining my energy more than ever. As I walked through the neighborhood's deserted streets, I couldn't help but reflect on the constant challenges of my profession. The nights were long and lonely, and the lack of an active social life was starting to take a toll. The neighborhood where I lived was quiet during the day, but at night it was transformed. Lighting was sparse, leaving many areas plunged into darkness. I always liked to think that darkness offered a kind of peace, but that night it only seemed to heighten my sense of vulnerability. I knew I was neglecting my own safety, but in the busy and tiring routine I led, taking care of myself was always the last priority. As I walked, my thoughts wandered far away, but something interrupted my reflection. I noticed a black car that seemed to be following me. At first, I tried to ignore it, thinking it was just paranoia caused by tiredness. However, as I continued on my way, the car remained at a constant distance, awakening a growing sense of alertness within me. I looked around, trying to find an escape route or somewhere I could feel safe, but the streets were deserted. Each step felt heavier and the darkness around me more oppressive. I picked up the pace, hoping the car would simply pass me, but it was still there, like a silent shadow. My heart was pounding, and I began to consider the idea of running, but the exhaustion of the shift made that option less viable. It was then that I suddenly heard a familiar voice calling my name. I looked around and, to my relief, I saw William, an old childhood friend, walking towards me. William's presence brought immediate relief, but the tension of the moment still hung in the air. He recognized me immediately, and without me having to explain much, he understood my situation. With a comforting smile, he offered me company home, and I readily accepted, feeling like a huge weight was being lifted from my shoulders. As we walked together, we exchanged stories from the past, trying to forget about the car that was still behind us. However, the threat did not dissipate so easily. The car continued to follow us, increasing my anxiety. The silence of the night seemed amplified, each sound sharper and more frightening. William tried to keep the conversation light, but it was clear that he was also paying attention to our pursuer. Finally, the car sped up and passed right by us, disappearing into the darkness. We felt palpable relief, but the experience left me deeply disturbed. That moment of terror brought to the surface all my insecurities and the reality that I needed to take better care of my personal safety. We arrived at my house, and William insisted on walking me to the door, making sure I was safe. Before saying goodbye, he suggested that we meet more often, like we did in childhood. The idea of rebuilding our lost friendship brought an unexpected sense of comfort and joy. It was a cold autumn night in the big city, and I was alone in my small, gloomy apartment. Recently unemployed, my daily routine consisted of sending out resumes and participating in interviews that never seemed to lead to anything. Loneliness followed me like a constant shadow, and the lack of perspective left an uncomfortable void in my chest. That particular night, I felt especially vulnerable. Maybe it was the incessant rain pounding on the windows, or the oppressive silence that filled every corner of the apartment. I was exhausted after a whole day of fruitless job searching. I prepared a simple meal, turned on the television in hopes of finding some distraction, and curled up in a blanket on the couch. The monotonous noise of the TV and the crackling of the rain should have been comforting, but instead they only accentuated my feeling of isolation. As the hours passed, I tried to convince myself that the next interview would be the one that changed everything. But deep down, I knew that, at least for that night, I was destined for another long and lonely wait for sleep. I was almost falling asleep on the couch when I heard a strange noise coming from the living room. At first, I thought it was just the old structure of the building creaking like it always did. But then, I heard it again a faint, almost imperceptible sound as if something or someone were moving stealthily. My heart sped up, and I felt a wave of panic rise up my spine. 
I got up slowly, trying not to make any noise. The dim light from the television was the only source of illumination in the room, casting ghostly shadows on the walls. I walked to the living room door, hoping to find the source of the sound. I searched every corner with my eyes, but I didn't see anything out of place. The silence was now almost deafening. I decided to go back to my room, trying to convince myself that everything was just my imagination. However, as I approached the bedroom door, I felt a chill run through my body. The feeling of being watched was palpable, as if invisible eyes were following me. I tried to ignore it, but each step seemed to echo in my mind like a warning of imminent danger. The strange noises became more frequent and intense. The sound of something scratching the floor and light knocks on the walls made me increasingly scared. I locked the doors and windows, checking several times to make sure they were securely closed. Even so, the feeling of insecurity did not disappear. Every shadow seemed to move, every sound seemed closer. I decided to look for something to defend myself. I grabbed a knife from the kitchen and sat in the corner of the room, trying to convince myself that I was safe. But then, I heard a faint, almost imperceptible whisper coming from the hallway. My heart was beating so loudly that I was sure whoever or whatever was out there could hear it too. The tension was unbearable. My mind raced with thoughts of who could be there, hiding in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to attack. Every second seemed like an eternity, and I didn't know how much longer I could withstand that pressure. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. In an impulse of desperation, I ran out of the apartment and down the stairs, tripping over the steps in my rush to get to the ground floor. When I finally managed to get out into the street, the cold rain hit me like a reality check. I grabbed my cell phone and called the police, my voice shaking as I explained the situation. The next few minutes were torture, but I finally heard the sirens approaching. The police arrived and entered my apartment, searching every corner. The wait was harrowing, but after a while, one of the police officers came out with a handcuffed man. He was hiding in the hall closet, and by the look on his face, I knew his intentions weren't good. I thanked the police with tears in my eyes, the feeling of relief mixed with terror still present. That night, I realized how fragile security can be and how vulnerable we are in our moments of solitude. I decided that I would no longer be alone in that apartment, looking for the strength to start my life over in a place where I could feel safe again. On that cold, damp night, I left class later than usual. I was exhausted. My head was throbbing and my eyes were burning from so much effort. The streets of the university neighborhood were deserted, enveloped in an unsettling darkness that only the streetlights tried, unsuccessfully, to dispel. I walked slowly, with my shoulders slumped and my backpack heavy on my back, yearning only for the safety and comfort of my room. The university seemed a haunting place at that hour, with the shadows of the trees cast on the asphalt and the empty buildings as silent as tombs. I was vulnerable and felt each step echo in the stillness of the night. I tried not to think about anything other than the bed that awaited me, but an uncomfortable feeling was beginning to form in the back of my mind, as if something was about to happen. As I followed my usual path, I began to feel that something was wrong. It felt like there was someone watching me, a silent, invisible presence moving in the shadows. I turned quickly, but only found the street deserted behind me. My heart sped up, and a chill down my spine made me shiver. I quickened my pace, trying to shake off the feeling of being chased, but the feeling of being followed became stronger and stronger. I looked back several times, but I could never see anyone. My footsteps echoed in the empty street, and with each look back, my fear increased. I started imagining every possible scenario, from a prankster to something more sinister. Fear grew inside me with every corner I turned. My hands were shaking, and my breathing became labored. It felt like the few remaining streetlights were going out one by one, as if the darkness was conspiring to swallow me. 
The silence of the night was interrupted only by the sounds of my own footsteps and the howling wind that made the dry leaves dance on the asphalt. In a moment of panic, I began to run, fear driving me to move faster than ever. I felt the presence behind me, getting closer and closer, almost touching me. I spun down a narrow street, my feet pounding the ground, my heart racing. It seemed as if the shadows were moving along with me, peering at me with invisible eyes. Panic took over me completely, and I could barely think straight. Finally, I saw the door of my building in the distance, like a beacon of hope in the darkness. With one last effort, I ran to the entrance, unlocked the door with shaking hands and threw myself inside, closing it quickly behind me. I leaned against the door, trying to catch my breath, my heart still beating like a drum in my chest. The feeling of relief was immediate, but the residual fear was still there, clinging to me like a shadow. I quickly went upstairs, entered my apartment and locked all the doors and windows. I sat up in bed, still shaking, and tried to convince myself that I was safe. It was only the next day, when I turned on the television, that I discovered the truth. There was news about a robber who was attacking students in the area at night. The dread returned when I realized that I had actually been followed. The feeling of vulnerability never left me, and that night walk was never the same. The security of my home felt more fragile than ever, and the darkness outside still watched me, waiting for the next opportunity. I lived alone in a small apartment in the heart of the big city. I've always liked the feeling of independence, of taking care of myself without depending on anyone. My days were busy with work, and on the weekends I liked to relax at home, watching movies or reading books. I didn't have many close friends, but I didn't care much about that. Loneliness never bothered me until that moment. One night, while watching a thriller movie, my cell phone rang. The number was unknown, but thinking it might be important, I answered. No one answered. There was only an unsettling silence on the other end of the line. I hung up, trying not to think about it too much. In the following days, the calls continued. Always silent, always in the middle of the night. Every ring of the phone made my heart race. I began to feel like someone was watching me. With every shadow that moved on the street, with every creak in the walls of my apartment. Insecurity grew inside me, transforming me from an independent person into someone afraid to even leave the house. I decided I could no longer live in that constant tension. I needed to find out who was behind the calls. I installed an app that tracked calls and finally got a number that appeared to be responsible. To my surprise and horror, I discovered it was an old friend, someone I had lost contact with years ago. My heart froze when I realized he was chasing me. One night, I heard a strange noise coming from the door. When I went to check, I found the door ajar and him inside my apartment, with a look of madness in his eyes. He was holding a knife and threatened me, saying he couldn't live without me, that he needed me back in his life. In an impulse of desperation, I managed to distract him and run out of the apartment, screaming for help. The neighbors heard my screams and called the police. When authorities arrived, he was still there, completely out of it. He was arrested and taken into custody. Although I escaped physically unharmed, the trauma of that night stayed with me for a long time. I had nightmares and anxiety attacks, but with the support of family and friends, I began to rebuild my life. I learned to trust the people around me more and slowly regained the sense of security that I previously took for granted. I lived alone in my apartment since my husband passed away a few years ago. The building was old, with long corridors, lit by dim, yellowish lamps. It was a quiet residential area, but at night, the absolute silence that hung over the building brought a feeling of restlessness. My fragile body and slow steps betrayed my advanced age, and I avoided leaving the house after dark, fearing what I might encounter in the outside world. That particular night, it was raining, 
The rain beat against the windows, creating a constant melody that usually calmed me. Lying in bed, with a book in my hands, I tried to distract myself from the emptiness that had filled my apartment since my husband's death. The night was late when I heard the first knock on the door. The knocks were insistent, almost rhythmic, piercing the silence of the night. I felt my heart accelerate. I got up from the bed, wrapped in my robe, and walked slowly down the dark hallway. With each step, the feeling of vulnerability increased. I stopped in front of the door, hesitant, my hand shaking as I reached for the handle. Who's there? I asked with a trembling voice, but got no answer. I looked through the peephole, but I didn't see anyone. My heart was beating so hard that it seemed to echo through the hallway. I decided to go back to the room, trying to ignore the fear that consumed me. When I was halfway there, I heard the knocks again, this time louder and more hurried. Fear took hold of me, freezing my movements. I headed back to the door, determined to find out what was going on. I looked through the peephole again, but once again, there was no one. The knocking suddenly stopped, leaving an even more disturbing silence. It was then that I noticed something strange about the doorknob. It was slightly crooked, as if it had been forced. My stomach turned. Someone was trying to break down my door. The sense of security I had in my own home completely collapsed. I backed up slowly, each step feeling more difficult than the last. I went back to my room and locked the door, trying to convince myself that I was safe in there. The night was long and restless. I could barely sleep. Every sound seemed amplified in the early morning silence. When the sun finally started to rise, I gathered the courage to leave the room. With cautious steps, I went to the main door. The handle was clearly damaged, as if someone had used a tool to try to pry it open. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my racing heart. I called the police and reported the incident. They promised to send a patrol car to patrol the area overnight, but the feeling of vulnerability persisted. I discovered that although someone tried to get into my apartment, they eventually gave up. Even though I still felt scared, I found a certain peace in knowing that, for now, I was safe. I promised myself that I would take steps to improve the security of my home. After all, even with my fragility, I still had the strength to face another day. As a retired teacher, I have always appreciated the tranquility of my remote rural home. Isolation offered me the peace I craved after years of crowded classrooms. The nights were silent, just the sound of the wind passing through the surrounding trees. Living alone, solitude had become a constant companion, something I had learned to value. One of those nights, I woke up suddenly. The clock next to the bed said three in the morning. There was something in the air, a strange feeling that I couldn't immediately define. I felt a chill go up my spine, as if something or someone was watching me. I shook my head, trying to dismiss the idea. It must have just been my imagination. I got up from the bed with a mix of curiosity and restlessness. The wooden floor creaked beneath my bare feet as I walked toward the bedroom window. The wind outside was stronger than normal, making the trees dance in a macabre symphony. When I reached the window, I looked out but saw nothing but darkness. I sighed in relief and started to turn around to go back to bed when I heard a slight click. The sound came from another window at the end of the hall. My palms sweated and my heart beat faster, but I decided to investigate. I walked down the dark hallway, each step increasing my sense of vulnerability. As I approached the hallway window, I noticed a shadow moving quickly. I froze in place, unable to look away. I tried to convince myself that it was just a play of lights and shadows created by the wind, but the feeling of being watched persisted. Forcing myself to continue, I slowly approached the window. Suddenly, the sound of footsteps outside broke the silence. My entire body tensed. I looked out the window and saw an indistinct figure moving quickly away. The shadow disappeared as abruptly as it had appeared. I tried to follow the direction with my eyes, but all that was left was darkness. 
I returned to the room trying to calm down. My mind was in a whirlwind of thoughts, trying to rationalize what had happened. Then, my gaze fell on something on the floor next to the window. I bent down and found dirty footprints. They weren't mine. Panic gripped me as the reality of the situation set in. A stranger had been watching me, watching my every move all night. The feeling of being watched wasn't just a figment of my imagination. I locked all the doors and windows, but the feeling of vulnerability continued, even more intense. I knew that even in my own home, I wasn't truly safe. And with this disturbing certainty, I spent the rest of the night awake, fearing the return of that stranger who had broken the peace of my solitude.